listening to The Burn. Gaming stuff, blazing fast. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the <laughs> new episode of The Burn, a podcast about gaming than blazing fast that inherits the technical problems from his parents' show, Game Burning Podcast. I'm Aviv Manoa. And now, and I'm Omer Kaplan, and now on video form. <laughs> Yes. As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> we started to do the opening and we talked about how it's uh, cool that we have video with cameras and stuff. And I'm looking over an OBS and I realized that I haven't clicked the record button on OBS. So we are not actually recording video. We are only recording audio. So anyway, uh, take two. Now we are doing it uh, properly. If you want yes. um, to watch... The video version of the podcast, you can do so in youtube.com slash isle.me. Uh, the um, audio podca- episode of the, of the podcast is on uh, theburn.live, and I'll try to remember to put uh, video links in the, in the show description. And if you want to see other things I do live streaming, you can do so in twitch.tv slash isle.me. The only reason we don't stream this podcast is that it's short. There is, there is virtually no reason to go live for 30 minutes and then, uh, then go offline. Uh, anyway, in uh, each episode of this show, we discuss a game we liked or disliked. And the uh, uh, news topics that we have something to say about and I have things to say this week. So we will do that. Um, other than that, we have, we have a merch store. Um, yes. I, I don't. I don't remember if if we mentioned in previous episode anyway. But uh, I am. Uh, I work in Stream Elements, and we launch a, a merch uh, feature that anyone can use. So, um, um, what is my merch? Uh, merch that Stream Elements that is dot com slash isle dot me. I think yes, it is. Uh, we'll of. Obviously, put uh, a, a link in the show notes. Currently, you can get the burn mug and the burn stickers, but uh, I, I will tease and say that very, very soon, in the coming week, there will be new things on the store. Ooh. Yes. So, yeah. So, go ahead. Get your mugs. Get your remotes. Get your... Okay. I'm, I'm no, we, we are not saying remotes, but uh, I, I yes. do want you to, to buy a mug. It, so next time you show it, it will be actually a, a, a The Burn mug. <laughs> there's, there's some stuff on the back. You just don't know it yet. But yeah. <laughs> okay. it's actually, it actually have the, it actually have the colors. So. Yeah. The, the color of the, of the mug is, uh, is right. It's, it's yeah. bright orange. Um, so uh, the, the game we're talking about today is Kingdom Come Deliverance, uh, which you played and I uh, watched a bit when it came out, but uh, I haven't played it. And uh, beside it having a lot of bugs on launch, I know nothing about it. So take us on a beautiful journey through medieval Europe. Yes. So first of all, first, like, let's handle the important stuff first. When you did a video overlay, do I have my name underneath, like here? No, I, I didn't do uh, overlay. <laughs> over t- 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 how do you call them? Labels. I didn't put labels. Okay. I can do that while while you're talking with the magic of stream elements. Okay. All right. Sweet. All right. So I just like casually rolled out of the frame. All right. Yes, indeed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna talk you today into getting into an abusive relationship with a game called Kingdom Come Deliverance. So here's my story. I actually got to Kingdom Come Deliverance from playing a lot, of the, a lot of The Witcher 3. So I actually went through all of the base game, which I've done in the past, and then got through both of the expansions. So for the last couple of weeks, I consumed a ton of Witcher content, which was super nice. I enjoyed the story. Uh, it took me about 35 hours, got through the two expansions, most of the side quests, and... After finishing The Witcher and both of the expansions, I, f- I actually felt the need for like a, f- a fantasy game and like a medieval time, something that's like in the vicinity of The Witcher. And so I was looking at the, my, uh, my Steam library and Kingdom Come Deliverance was there, never played it before. So I just fired it up, installed it. It wasn't a big installed. And I went into the game with the sense of, hey, 
you know, this is going to be a nice experience. A fantasy game is going to be a knight. I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to save everybody. But in I'm reality, gonna be this game. the very best. Like no one ever was. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know the English lyrics. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah. So this is what I thought it was going to be. But actually, I got into a true, like full on medieval simulator, I want to call it. So. I'm not going to give much of the story because this game has what I think is the best prologue slash um, tutorial that I've ever I've seen in recent times. It's really, really good, but it onboards you into part of the story. So I'm not going to give much of it. But long story short, you are a son of a blacksmith and you, you, you're pretty, I mean, you just live in, um, I think it, I read it was like the fifth, the fifteenth century in an area that is what today is the Czech Republic. So you kind of like in between, like it's, different castles in the. Hmm? It's the it's in the the area of the Holy Roman Empire, I think something like that. Yeah, it's it's it, it's called Bohemia. It's kind of like yes. between. So from a religious standpoint, you're pretty much stuck between like the the Rome and the Pope and everything that goes in there. And uh, like the German influence, so you kind of like people there are torn between you know who's cl- like clergy is right, quote unquote, and like all of, like which king you should like swear allegiance to and all this stuff. So there's that. Cities are basically a castle with some like a village attached to it, and they're pretty much uh, independent of one another. And but mainly what i what you get from the first and i have like a, about 10 hours into the game what you get in the first three hours there is that life in medieval times just suck big time so you go in there you're a son of a blacksmith you have to you, you're like you're hungry all the time you have to manage so this is where like the simulator part come in you have to manage your hunger so you you need to eat and if you over if you overeat you become clumsy and it become hard i ha- i then, hate this this game already yes so hold on it's not it's not over and so a lot of the game and dialogues so everything in this game impacts everything so one of the most important thing in this game like in succeeding like, i don't want to say succeeding but getting through dialogues the way you want them is to have a, a good like quote unquote speed skill so and and the, your speed skill is dependent on what you wear, if you're dirty or not. So you, not, not only you have to manage your like hunger and sleep, so you need to manage your sleep. So if, you, if you're tired and you haven't slept, then your stamina is down and the screen is getting all blurry because you're tired and your stats are lower down. So, and not only that, you have to manage how dirty you are. So if you, I don't know, went into a fist fight with a person. Like mm-hmm. hygiene, you mean? The what? Yeah, yeah the high... Uh, I mean, it's not, it's not only hygiene. So yeah, you, yeah, you can like take like a medieval time shower and be clean, but also you have to make sure your clothes are clean. So you manage your laundry and your personal hygiene. So I'll give you an example. Okay. You went, I would, you I would say a... it's interesting, but so far it's mainly getting me to not want to try this game ever. Uh, no, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm trying to talk you into an abusive relationship. Hold on. So... Like, like, like all of our relationships. Yes, yeah, pretty much. So, <laughs> so imagine you went into a fist fight with a person. Now your clothes are all bleeding and you're bleeding. So if you went like, you know, looking like somebody who just got out of a fist fight and talked to like a noble person, they would treat you like trash. They will say, oh, you know, you're like, you're a peasant. I don't care about you. I don't know anything. But if you change your clothes to like a clean clothes, you take a bath, you put on like a knight's armor and look like, you know, a knight that looks somebody from like the, one of the guards from the castle, they would like treat you as like military and talk like highly about you and oh, give so, you... Give, so it's give like, like um, so it's like a hitman when you change your clothes and you're a completely different person. Yes, but it also impacts your dialogue. So some, let's say some quote unquote quests, People won't talk to you if you're not dressed appropriately or stuff like that. And you have to take care of everything. So, you know, while you, so basically you don't have any money because you're a son of a blacksmith and you suck. So, you know, you try to go and buy something. You said, okay, well, you know, I just want to go on adventure. I'm going to buy a sword. And all the merchants are really good at, well, being merchants. So they'll screw you with prices. 
So you can get like the crappiest equipment because they like overprice you and you have to haggle, but you're not good with haggling. So you're basically all of like from the 10 hours I played, I spent eight hours being poor so and homeless and dirty. And so basically, I, I literally, I was so depressed that I got into this new town, <laughs> but I didn't have a place to sleep. So I, I literally spent an entire day at an inn trying to do some gambling. So the, you, there's like a mini game of like medieval dice, which was actually kind of fun. Uh, so I spent the entire day gambling and I was like literally stressed out because I didn't have any money. And the game is really unforgiving with anything, but I got just enough money to buy myself a room for the night. So for two days, I was gambling, sleeping, waking up the next day, getting some money to buy food so I won't die. And then I tried to get into the story. So, oh, and the, and the thing that sucks the most out of this whole package is that the game is so unforgiving that one, combat is, is really hard. And I mean, even if you're good at it, it's not very satisfying. And B, even saving your game is dependent on a consumable. So you have to buy this, uh, what they call some sort of like an alcoholic beverage that you sit down in an inn, you drink it, and then you can save the game. But once you're out of this consumable, you have to go into an inn or an innkeeper or someplace and buy it with the okay, money I, that you don't have. I, I'm, I'm still waiting to hear your reasoning for why should I play this game? Okay, yes. So here's the, here's the turning point. So now we're turning into the thing that why you should play the game. First of all, the story is really, 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 really good. Like the writing and the dialogues, everything is voiced over. The, I mean, the graphics are beautiful and everything looks really authentic. That's great. But the story is really compelling. And because the game is so unforgiving, it's really immersive. Like I'm telling you, it's an abusive relationship. Like everything about this game, and I hate survival games, makes you want, to, want not to play it. <laughs> But... Because the story is so good and I just want to make it until like the next thing, look what I mean, see what happens and see if I can even make it to be, I don't know, a knight or something or see what comes out of the character. Just make me want to go through it. And because the game is so immersive, it's actually like, it's like playing the medieval simulator. So if you want to know how like the closest, it, this is basically the closest game I've ever come to getting the med, to get the medieval experience. So, you know, With the Witcher, you're like a hero, you're invincible, you're, you know, you're superhuman thing. Over there, it's like everybody's poor, everybody, you know, everything sucks. Everybody's like begging to get money. If you live in the castle, you're kind of like getting, you know, somehow getting by. But, and, and you know, nobility have their own like agendas. I don't know. It's, it's a very accurate, it feels like at least an accurate representation of kind of like how old time used to be like which it's by all accounts super sucks i i wonder um, uh, i'll need to talk with uh, we we have uh, uh um, one of the hosts for the game building podcast is uh, is uh, an actual historian and uh, mm-hmm. i'll need to talk with him about it because uh, last uh, week in the game building podcast we, he played the witcher for the first time ever after okay. watching the after watching the series and we got into this whole discussion of I, I I'm um, I'm telling him that I well the witcher doesn't need to be historically accurate because right well it's it's a, it's a fantasy world and it, they just use uh, uh, all those tropes to to convey uh, some sort of meaning etc and uh, on the other side he uh, expects a, a level of um, uh, historically That's accuracy uh, from the Um, from a game that depicts a certain uh, culture and stuff so I, I'm very curious to to hand him this game and see if it's actually historically accurate or is this our representation of how medieval times are supposed to be well let me let me, let me tell you this I spent half an hour over the weekend and looting dead corpses for a village that got destroyed by this army or whatever. I was spending looting corpses for bread and cheese because I didn't have anything to eat. And if that's not an accurate representation of medieval times, I don't know what that is. No, I don't know. Go- Half of the time you're talking about this game, I'm wondering if you're talking about your real life. I'm, I'm telling you, I was going through like a burnt <laughs> village and looting, looting corpses for cheese and bread. This is, you know, 
and oh and another thing and oh, oh and by the way obviously all the food in the game have like expiration so the obviously food goes bad so apples will go rotten so you have to eat them at some point but bread will somehow stay fresh uh okay i'm telling i enjoy this game immensely it's an abusive relationship i'm gonna keep playing it i don't know if i'm gonna get through it but tell me something it is what it is is mm-hmm. this uh the the default um challenge level of the game is there are there options to turn this off yes there's two there's two uh, difficulty levels there's normal and hardcore obviously went for normal hardcore is, no is like hardcore in diablo i think like... hardcore is like i think hardcore is once somebody like gets you one times with a sword you die yeah and and you yeah, can with continue normal, <laughs> i have no idea but like i haven't tried it so with normal you can You know exchange some blows with the swords exchange stuff but i died so much in combat because combat there is really hard and not satisfying like combat i think is the achilles heel of the game it's at least give me something to wait for and be like and have fun with but no you have to you know get like decide if you want a top blow or a side blow or a bottom blow or and you have to defend and ah uh, it's it's almost it's almost like it's souls like but not really but i feel like the same level of frustration like in uh, Dark Souls. I want to tell you something. You, um, you, you praise this game for the simulation for all other areas, but when it comes to combat and the game gives you a somewhat accurate combat simulation, you don't like it. I just, I, I just want the game to give me something to hold on to other than the story. I want to, I want to, I want to have fun. I want to, I want to feel like a hero. I want to feel empowered. I want to feel like something, but no, you have to loot corpses for cheese. But, but, and then some but it seems, it seems very obvious that the game doesn't want you to feel like a hero. All right. That's, I mean, yeah, it's, you basically, for the first couple of hours, you just suck. You know, I was, I was, I was, I was you, okay. So the good thing about this guy, you get a horse. I mean, at some point during the tutorial, you get a horse. So I was like, okay, I can just ride my horse and it'll be fine. So you ride your horse, but then at some point, bandits just started chasing me and I don't have anything, <laughs> I just run. But they, not only that they're faster, they have bows and arrows. So I'm bleeding. So I barely got to where I wanted to be and I'm all bleeding and the arrows like stuck in my legs. Oh, it's, uh, this game. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, the... The, the game is is a lot closer to something like um, Skyrim than than the Witcher and Skyrim had a bunch of survival modes that uh, forced you to uh, to sleep and eat and stuff like that and make made the, the food uh, perishable uh, etc obviously it doesn't have dragons and magic and uh, stuff like that but there is a very uh, core audience for those kind of um of I have simulation RPG with survival mechanics. I don't know that I will ever play something like this. Uh, although I'm, I'm beginning to doubt myself because uh, things like uh, um, what was the game called? The, the Frost one, uh, the Frozen one, um, something. Damn, now I, I, I can't remember the game. Okay. Um, The, the survive uh, I, I, I will google it because I, oh I, I think I know what you're talking about um I I, I, tell, I mean it's not it's, it's not my style either but the, it's just so immersive and Dark. the controls are mushroom <laughs> oh, <no>. Dark, <laughs> fr- the frozen dark frozen dark thank you oh is it oh, is it really I just like I just made it up Ah, uh, maybe it's not that. It's something the, dark. The, the frozen darkness. The dark, the darky freezing. I don't know. I just remember that the, the um, ex- not expansion, the update was called Winter Mole. Uh, um, and it, it's yeah, going to have, bug have, me. Yeah, if, you, if you're getting a Winter Mole, you should see your doctor, by the way. <laughs> um, oh, apparently Winter Mole is, is a drink. The, the, oh. the anyway um so what I, i was trying to say uh, despite not uh, remembering the the name of the game um is that um a, a game like that is, is something that's really interesting to me but 
I, I can't put my finger on exactly where the line is between having a, a, a decent survival experience that is rewarding. And everything you tell me sounds like the survival aspect of the game is the, uh, um, uh, um, detracts from it. Uh, and like you you want to have this great not fantasy RPG but 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 and well it's a fantasy RPG that does without the magic but uh, a, a great adventure RPG experience so maybe it's um, maybe it's kind of challenging but it sounds like the all survival aspects is is not yeah I mean it's it's really immersive and so far all the survival based elements are the long hard dark. To- Oh, the long... Okay, great. Thank you. So, I mean, it, so it's really immersive one. And so far, all the survival-based elements like food and sleep are not super hard to come by. You just sometimes have to be creative about it, like looting corpses for cheese. But, but, but you said that you spent two game days gambling just that you can sleep and eat. Yes. Yes. I mean, yes. I what, was that I your shortcoming or... <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, here's the thing. I so I so I don't know how we got to this scenario, but I just didn't have like enough money, so I had to sleep somewhere so I can, you know, just you know get my stats ready and get ready for the next quest. And I mean, there could be another way. It's just like the way I got to it. I don't. I don't think the game is linear enough, so there's like one way. I think you can. <laughs> maybe I, I, maybe now I'll try the game and I will find out that you went about it in a, in a very. A convoluted way and the game is actually a lot I, easier than... <laughs> I I, I, first of all I won't be surprised because like the thing is with those games I'm a terrible like min maxer and things I, <laughs> I I just play like the RP like I RP a lot so sometimes stuff I would I would do stuff that doesn't make like zero, that makes zero sense so <laughs> I you know I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised oh by the way Yes. Uh, just you, you just reminded me with the, I think it's Sky, so in Skyrim, lock picking is very like fun and rewarding to do. Over there, lock picking is so incredibly hard, at least with a mouse and keyboard. It's super hard. And, and those obviously, those things cost money that you don't have. And, but wow, you should just, it, it, when you get a chance to YouTube the lock picking <laughs> in this game, it's so hard. I don't know. Maybe I'm a bad gamer. I don't know. It's, this game but i'm gonna you know it's so immersive and the story is so intense that i'm gonna i'm, I'm gonna <laughs> dig into it some more okay uh, let's oh, move yeah. on to what oh the best uh, the best prologue or tutorial i've seen in you know in very long time so just if anything just for that you should try okay interesting let's move on to to the, the news topic I, I have things to say about stuff uh, and uh, I brought uh, two a uh, news article from the past two days, actually. Uh, and the first is that my- Microsoft uh, released some specs for the upcoming uh, new generation Xbox. Uh, let's begin by talking about Microsoft's naming conventions. Who the heck named things in Microsoft? I, I don't get it. We had an Xbox, and then we had an Xbox 360. Okay, fine. And then we had an Xbox One. And then there was a bunch of Xbox One S and Xbox One X and stuff like that. And now we have an Xbox Series X. And like, how do you differentiate between the new Xbox and all the different versions for the old one? It's it's on the it's on the same level of of bad as Samsung Galaxy phones. So <laughs> so annoying. I I am not yeah. saying that they need to be so non-creative as the PlayStation with its one two three four five <laughs> naming, um, but but do something that will be a little less confusing and and convoluted. Um, yeah. <coughs> sorry. Anyway, I'm not going to list the the actual specs be, because it really doesn't matter. Um, there are two things I, I want to say in that regard. Uh, first of all, is that Microsoft really highlighting that the fact that they are going, uh, they are doing custom uh, hardware for this thing, like hmm. custom SSDs and custom, uh, I don't know. Uh, what was the other thing? But uh, a lot of the... GPU, o- probably. Uh, 
maybe there is some oh, yeah. some some yeah, it talk says of... cust- cu- custom design processor yeah custom processor and stuff like that and it seemed that like we are going backwards because in the in the current gen the big thing was that everyone went um amd with uh with the x86 uh, uh, standard hardware and uh, people said that uh, it would make um, the porting between PC and console easier. And Microsoft, um, beside those specs, also said that all their first-party games are going to immediately come to Game Pass, meaning mm. probably that we are going to get on day one uh, all those games on PC as well, beside the fact that the Microsoft uh, Xbox app for Windows is, is total crap. So they are doing something that is supposed to be on on par with with PC uh, on day on day one and that just seemed weird to me. Um, I, I read a couple of uh, analysts talking about how uh, well basically it, it, and it's always true when those machines come out, they will be on par with end PCs. for the same time but that will basically only be true for what six months maybe right after after that uh, um, Nvidia all are, are already um, developing uh, cards that are going to be better than what uh, uh, it's talked right. R- right now for the Xbox I don't know about the PlayStation but probably the same so so yeah yeah um, The, the the current generation was was good I don't think there was uh, any big complaints about uh, performance like uh, previous generation previous generation uh, consoles uh, couldn't get to above 720p resolution while mm-hmm. pcs already did uh, a 180 um, not 180 1080s uh, 60 FPS and this generation started and Uh, at uh, uh, 960 uh, but very quickly caught up to 1080 and now they do 4k so mm-hmm. uh, we are in a good place I think uh, uh, in that regard and uh, I I just hope that we we don't get to the level of of uh, of uh, performance difference that we saw uh, in the previous gener- generation because whenever you Uh, there's a, a big difference between the performance of PC and consoles we start seeing uh, AAA games uh, being held back because um, mm. the, 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 the companies just can't get the performance they want out of them uh, so let's hope uh, it, it won't come to that so that's yeah uh, yeah. Yeah, also, yeah so let's hope that you games that are developed for console first when they actually port to the PC they won't have any major performance issues just so because they when they develop it for consoles they have to account for the custom hardware but now it's gonna yeah. go to the PC and then it's gonna be like flaky yeah so in our current generation that became less of an issue uh, right. and, and we see a lot of games that uh, was released to the consoles and And then released to PC and got a, a, such a huge boost in performance um, um, f- for example mass at the world like we we discussed last episode uh, other games like uh, um, what was it I think was it new I don't remember anyway um, this this uh, This console generation was really good for uh, for the synergy between consoles and uh, and PC and both Microsoft and Sony are uh, are looking in more ways to integrate uh, that specifically with uh, um, cloud gaming and the uh, game passes and uh, etc so uh, we are moving more and more into a world where uh, the audience has uh, maybe both a console and a PC and Uh, and uh, there is less of a, of a conflict between the the two uh, groups and then there is Nintendo uh, sitting on the sidelines yeah. <laughs> with a, uh, with a console that sells um, uh, oh. three times as much as anything else so they can afford to do it <laughs> and they don't have and they, and they barely have cross device compatibility so you know yeah they don't have anything but again they their market uh, is so huge 
that yeah. they, they can basically do whatever they want at the moment. Uh, we are, and, yeah, uh, and, I mean, and it's a good hardware, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, at the at the end, I took too much time. I'll just say that uh, Steam released uh, a new experiment for the uh, search result on the on the website. And uh, what I wanted to say that it's interesting to see that the, the last uh, couple of months, maybe a year, Steam actually begins to move somewhere because they were sitting on their asses for years, not doing anything with the platform. And uh, because they just, uh, they were the market leaders and they didn't need to do anything. And then the last couple of years, they, um, uh, GRG Galaxy uh, become a really good software and Epic started to steal their games. And uh, both Ubisoft and, uh, and uh, EA uh, now have uh, game uh, subscription services that pu- pulls uh, game um users of steam so uh, someone at steam uh, at valve say okay we need to start innovating because we are starting to actually lose users for the first time in 10 years so yeah interesting to see Uh, maybe we'll uh, go more into it uh, when we have time in another episode yeah, so that's that. And this is uh, all the time we have for the show today. So thank you for listening. Uh, you can find us online on Twitter as uh, Isel and Omer Kaplan. And Omer, thank you very much uh, for being with us. Uh, thank you for me. having me. Yeah, excellent. And um, I don't know, see, see, a, see a therapist or something about your relationship with Kingdom Come. Oof. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it would. Yeah, I think it's I think it's my it's my issue. It's my it's the it's the sad gamer syndrome or something. I, I need to tell your wife she needs to start starving you so you will uh, do more for your food. I'm gonna, I'm gonna loot loot the kids for cheese or something. <laughs> oh, by the way, speaking of children. Um, two weeks ago in the Game Burn podcast, uh, um, we had a discussion about uh, Months Around the World, and then uh, Navot, the, the co-host with me, said he is putting his uh, seven-year-old kid uh, to farm for him in the game. So uh, that's something uh, um, you, you need to start looking at. I No comment. <laughs> <laughs> okay don't don't forget to to subscribe to the podcast comment and leave your reviews on your preferred listening app at the burn that live and as always our team music was created by Andorco with vocals by fishy twitch we have been the burn and uh, we'll uh, see you next time goodbye yeah